You're losing out if you've never heard of Charlie Munger. Today, I'm going to fill you in on the wisdom of Charlie Munger. Sure enough, you can make yourself financially secure and wealthy if you listen to what the billionaire has to say. If not for Warren Buffett, Munger would probably be the most well-known investor in the world. For nearly four decades, Munger has been Buffett's closest business partner and right-hand man, and he has played an important role in building Berkshire into what it is now. A $700 billion company. Sure enough, he fits the description of your rich billionaire figure and has a bank account full of zeros. So how did he do it? What was his mantra? Before we get into that, subscribe to our channel to get more interesting videos. Now let's get on with our video. Fish where the fish are. The majority of the time, fishermen would cast their nets in a region of the ocean where fish are plentiful due to the favorable conditions there. Thus, it is essential for the fishing sector to maintain a regular presence in international waters and to get fishing licenses in uncharted fishing regions. At one of the memorable Berkshire Hathaway meetings, Charlie Munger famously said, fish where the fish are, when asked for his advice on how to be successful. He is saying that a fisherman must fish in areas where there are lots of fish if he wants to capture a lot of them. Even more significant than the fisherman's skill is the mere presence of fish in the water. Anyone who wants to succeed can employ this metaphor in the real world. We'll use Tom and Peter, two fictitious characters, as examples. Because of their exceptional intelligence, Tom and Peter were able to complete two degrees at Cambridge in just four years while maintaining perfect GPAs. Let's also assume that they are extremely committed to their careers and are willing to work 80 hours per week to achieve their goals. Let's also suppose that they will cooperate in doing business honestly. With these three components, intelligence, effort, and integrity, you have a strong recipe for success. Given how similar they are, it makes sense that they would be incredibly successful. No, there's still another important factor at work here. If Tom decides to enter the fiercely competitive market for gasoline-powered cars, he will have a difficult time. This industry is in decline and will eventually go the way of the horse and buggy as more and more people move to driving electric vehicles. Tom isn't fishing in an area of a lot of fish, in Munger's words. On the other hand, if Peter were to work in the software industry, he would be a part of a field that is growing at a record-breaking rate and is home to a number of extremely profitable companies. Given that Steve is fishing in an area with a lot of fish, who do you believe has a better chance of catching fish? Peter and John are both intelligent, diligent, and honorable, but Steve is working in an area that is full of opportunity, so I would back him. Get your first $100,000. The second rule is to start saving and investing the first $100,000 as soon as you can. According to Charlie Munger, it is quite tough to earn the first $100,000. Building wealth takes time and work, especially in the beginning. For most people, saving their first $100,000 is a big accomplishment. That's because doing anything to make you richer is impossible if you have nothing except money. Every dollar you invest must come directly from your paychecks because you have no beginning capital. If you have nothing to save for your first $100,000, it may be difficult. The most difficult part of getting your first $100,000 is having to start investing. Usually the hardest move is the first one. Whatever you're doing in life is irrelevant. The hardest and most important step is the first one. After all, once you start something, you can only finish it. I couldn't care less about the subject at hand. To accomplish your goal, you must start doing everything you can envisage doing. The same is true of financial investing decisions. On the surface, $100,000 could appear to be an impossibility. The hardest step is always the first one, though. The fact that you'll need to make numerous modifications makes the first 100,000 the most difficult. People typically fight against change. You will keep getting the same outcomes if you don't adjust to changing situations. What if you want even more than that? I wonder, the comfort of the familiar or the excitement of winning the first $100,000? You have to want it in order to earn that $100,000. I genuinely want it. You need to want it so desperately that you're willing to change your routine and upend your entire life to get it. The well-traveled path can provide comfort, but the biggest thing preventing you is this ease. In addition, change is the only constant in life. Simply yield to it, become accustomed to it. To achieve this significantly, your lifestyle will need to change. Instead of spending all of your income, you need to start saving and investing at least half of it. You'll also need to acquire a craving for stocks, just as many people do for other tangible types of wealth. To put it another way, investors should think of the stock market as the finest store and stocks as the best good. People will start concentrating on learning about and investing in stocks rather than shopping for and researching new consumer goods. But you can reinvest the earnings from your bought assets once you've saved at least six figures. Your account balance will be made up of more than just your own funds. 
Since the money you've already invested will continue to generate value without any more assistance from you, you won't need to save as much money to attain your next $100,000. Charlie Munger said, Once you make your first $100,000, it's okay to take your foot off the gas. This is due to the possibility that compounding's effects will manifest. If you put $100,000 into the market and make 10% on average every year for 20 years, your initial investment would have increased to about $675,000 from $100,000. Young people often get their feet wet, earn their first $100,000, and then put their lives on autopilot. In actuality, the initial $100,000 is the most important. Gathering snow, or making an initial investment, and making the first effort to pile it up, shape it into anything and then roll it down a hill are the first steps in making a compounding snowball. However, the less effort you need to put into it individually, the bigger and faster this snowball starts moving. Beyond a certain point, no further effort is required. The monster will keep growing and gaining momentum on its own far above what your strength could handle. Own equity. Coming up is one of my favorite Charlie Munger ideas, which is how an ordinary person may become extremely wealthy. Let me clarify this idea of equity ownership. Nearly all of Charlie's multi-billion dollar fortune has been placed in a single stock, Berkshire Hathaway. What does Charlie Munger earn as vice president of Berkshire after working there for over 50 years? Munger earns less than the majority of recent graduates in the fields of software engineering and investment banking, even though he owns a significant amount of equity in Berkshire. Munger has almost $2.0 billion invested in Berkshire. Be aware that Charlie Munger's success isn't a result of his remuneration. Rather, it's a result of the increasing yields on Berkshire shares. Here is a general principle that, if followed, will help you become wealthy. It could be beneficial to concentrate on positions that also provide you an ownership part in the company while job hunting. You increase your ownership of the firm and your claim to a larger share of its assets and profits with each additional share of stock you purchase. Large shares of firm stock are frequently awarded to employees in the IT sector. Due to the appreciation of their stock awards throughout the duration of their employment, Several people have become multi-millionaires after joining a quickly growing company. Spend less than you earn. The following guideline is to limit your spending. One of the fundamental guidelines to abide by if you want to amass a fortune is to spend less money than you earn. Though it might appear straightforward, putting this into practice could be difficult. I'll start by concentrating on those who go beyond their monthly income. A person is either receiving gifts or taking out loans if they are spending more than they are earning. Thanks to the advancing tide of a broadly thriving economy, Borrowing money has never been less of a problem. There are many opportunities to be persuaded into taking out a loan, whether it's to buy a new set of devices, a car, or a home. The Federal Reserve estimates that at least 40% of American households have a spending issue. Personal debt is problematic since it has the potential to become a prison. Although there are some sorts of positive debt, the most common type of consumer debt is credit card debt, which also serves as a perfect example of how simple it is to become trapped by it. Paying off the debt completely before the promotional period expires is the greatest approach to avoid interest. However, the majority of people max up their credit cards and then only make the minimal minimum monthly payments. This small payment usually covers the interest for the entire month. This makes using a credit card for financing an exceedingly expensive proposition when combined with a high interest rate. Additionally, there are people whose expenses and income exactly balance each other out. It is obvious that someone is not saving any money for the future if they are spending every dollar they receive. This suggests that in order to pay for expensive purchases like furnishings or trips, they will probably need to take out a loan. It will be extremely challenging, if not impossible, to achieve financial prosperity as a result of this practice. The debt trap is already in place. Diversification is great up to a point. Another wise remark from Munger that might be applicable to the present market collapse is the concept of excessive diversification is stupidity. Diversification is one of the best ways to smooth out the humps in the road of investment. Place your money in a variety of investments to diversify your assets. The returns on different investment types change over time. While the value of some goods may be rising, declining, or remaining unchanged, the value of others may be fluctuating. Diversity may therefore protect your earnings. Diversification is a difficult idea that not everyone can understand right away. Anywhere, this is an excellent concept. Believe me, I am aware of how important this is to your financial security. The possibility of having an excessive number of various components exists. Monitoring all of your stock assets becomes more difficult as they increase. Limiting your potential gain allows you to eventually achieve market average returns. 
If your risk tolerance is high enough that you need hundreds of stocks in your portfolio to feel secure, low-cost index funds are preferred to stock selection. Even if Munger is warning investors about the possible implications of using over-diversification as a crutch, diversifying your holdings is still one of the most crucial parts of long-term investing. If you don't intend to study about the firm you're investing in, don't buy a lot of stocks. When used together, these five guiding principles have the potential to give your wall an incredible boost. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to like a like and subscribe to the channel so we can bring you more videos like this one.